Oh, hey guys, welcome back. <sighs> okay guys, I am a little overwhelmed with what I have to do plant chore wise. This is a plant chore video, by the way. But I do want to start off with my Hoya props. So I didn't show you where I was, you know, keeping them. I basically had to move all the Hoyas that I propagated because they lived up here. And yeah, so there's just a single LED grow light and they're just they're hanging out. So I would say it's been close to a week since I propagated it. And I've checked every day like how moist the perlite was. And for the most part, they haven't needed like an extra spritz. Okay, so we got some insulars, we got some get and getting, some silver dollars. And ooh, okay, I was wrong. Well, this one's pretty, pretty dry. I'm kind of gauging to see like, is there like water at the bottom? As you can see, it's, there's none. The top is still pretty moist though. And like, I know people associate perlite with aeration, but perlite has a lot of like water holding properties. And so, I mean, I'm generally just like poking the top. The top part will be usually the driest. I still have some of that solution. So Diamond Nectar, Hydro Guard, and Rapid Start. And yeah, I mean, this is not only Hoya related, but any propagation. I like to feel how firm the leaves are. And that's why I always say like, really feel your, your plant's leaves because then when you propagate it, you could actually familiarize yourself with how hydrated a plant is and everyone feels good. And so I'm just adding water. I'm putting the water level like up here and we're just gonna keep going guys. You could kind of tell too with perlite because perlite when it's dry it's incredibly light and so when I'm lifting the cup I could kind of feel how dry this one see this one the moment I picked up this one I was like okay this one's not that dry okay these are perfect, guys. Again, one of the reasons why propagations fail is because the substrate isn't kept wet enough. And I know people worry too much about rot, but again, perlite, very lightweight, a lot of aeration, holds onto a lot of water. As long as there's those air pockets in between, they should be fine. And this goes with like LECA and Pond as well. Aeroid mix, I don't know how people do that often because first of all, if you have to keep your substrate super wet, fungus gnats are gonna be like an issue. And when it comes to me and soil propagation, it's been 50-50. Like, I don't know how people do it. Hey and now we things are already falling oh my god stop some hoya tequila sunrise silver Ooh, you look i'm scared i gotta check that one some silver ladies and some new guinea ghosts again just poking the tops Ooh, is this one dry is that why it's potentially this is light damage i don't know what's going on here okay i think i'm gonna look at that one separately but let's continue with our assessment oh are these like just super dry this one seems like it's super dry look at the wrinkles however this is the end of the stem there's definitely a new root there if y'all can't see it future can zoom in so i don't know if that's an old root but to me it looks like a new root i'm just gonna Add a bit more water to that one. Again, New Guinea Ghost, sun stressing. You get these really like pinkish colors and I love it. Yeah, a lot of these do feel okay actually. Oh, I think this is the one I was like, this one's the cutest one. I still think that. <laughs> okay, the Silver Ladies kind of feel dehydrated, but the Tequila Sunrises feel fantastic. Ooh, do you know what? I think I kept the Silver Ladies too dry. I think, okay, cause this is the bin that was the last one. I think I might've been rushing. So note for future Kevin, add more water because these ones are so dry. Okay, before I put them all back, I want to look at this one. This might be just sun damage, or not sun damage, light damage. <laughs> See, okay. She already has some new roots. So at the top here, future can zoom in. Look at those roots over there. And then when we pan down, there's a new one right over there. She's fine. Again, I said before, I'm like, focus not on the now when it comes to foliage and what it looks like. Focus on the general health of the plant, the root health of the plant, and potentially what the new growth will look like once she's rooted. So y'all know that I'm a big light <laughs> advocate. I don't know if that's what you would say. It's, it's only been a week, guys. Like that is crazy <laughs> that she has those small roots. Okay, so that's this one. Okay, here's the last try. And we have a single 
New Guinea ghosts, the Archibald Dianas, Crassi Petulates, and then the Nova ghosts. I'm really afraid of the Archibald Dianas just because I have only two. However, you know, they they do have thicker leaves, so generally they could hold on to more water. They can probably tolerate dehydration a little bit more. See, the perlite's super dry, but the leaves feel fantastic. I'm just seeing some damage on the leaves, and I'm thinking it's sun damage. I keep seeing sun damage, light damage, and so I'm just checking to see if it's any sort of mite. Okay, well, I didn't see anything, so I think it's light damage. Okay, just feeling the crassies. Wetness, it's a mixed bag. There's some that are drier than others, so I'm just gonna water over the majority of them. Okay, so that's fantastic guys. And if y'all are wondering what kind of light or how strong the light is, uh, I did a quick reading. The ones that aren't right under the grow light, because the grow light is just a strip grow light, they're about six to 800 foot candle. For me, in my opinion, when it comes to Hoyas, that's a little bit too low. There's a chance I might add a second grow light right beside it. But anyhow, the ones that are right under the grow light are getting about 1,500 to 2,000. And so I'm just going through some comments from the planter video that I posted on Friday. It is Friday today. Uh, Brittany, hey girl, she asked, I remember in one of your previous videos, you mentioned Californicus beneficial bugs, kill broad mites. Can you expand on that? I haven't heard anyone else talk about it. Also, I really don't want to have to use sulfur on top of sachets if I don't need to. Here's the thing, guys. Californicus is considered a generalist beneficial mite. So on top of going after spider mites, it goes after broad mites or flat mites. If y'all are familiar with Betsy Begonia, she posted a video in the summer where she talked about using Californicus to treat specifically flat mites. Based on what she said, she said that it eradicated the flat mites. She did talk about a white mite that they didn't go after. So I can't really talk about it, but again, future Kevin, please put the link to that video. But on top of that, when you look it up, like when you Google like Californicus and broad mites, there's a lot out there and evidence that show that it does go after them. I just don't know like how effective, how much do you need? For example, Californicus, and now I'm gonna talk about spider mites just because like I've had them, I've never had broad or flat mites that I know of. But when it comes to like a present infestation of spider mites and the use of Californicus to treat that, it only works if you have very, very, very low like infestation rates in your plant collection. Because like I said, Californicus is a generalist mite. So they are a bit more passive when it comes to spider mite. I feel like you would need like a huge population compared to other beneficials to treat an active spider mite infestation. So again, I'm rambling again. Oh my gosh. Like I haven't read enough to know how a aggressive Californicus is to a broad mite population or infestation, for example. Anyhow, did I answer your question? I always, honestly, after the last video, I'm like, Kevin, focus on what the question was because you off, you often just ramble. Okay, again, I'm no expert. I just like do my research. Oh yeah, you asked about sulfur C. I'm like, I'm not focused at all. Here's the thing. I have zero experience with sulfur. Ultimately, I haven't read a lot about the sulfur treatments. For me as a plant parent, I will always want to go the route of beneficials. And so yeah, guys, I know nothing about the sulfur treatments. If I ever find broad mites, I would treat with Californicus. So I can't really speak about the sulfur stuff. Oh my God, I rambled. This always happens to me, guys. Also, I need a haircut. I know, I just, actually, it looks okay. It looks okay, guys. Okay, are we cute? Are we cute? Okay, here is Miss Melina Chrysum, this gorgeous, gorgeous baby here. Oh, there was a question about the clear pots. I get this question like every day. <laughs> okay, Mary Perry asked where I got these big clear pots. So, oh, I just hit the ceiling. So she's talking about these pots. I'm pretty sure they're either eight or 10 inch. I got them from Raven Vision Orchid Supply, and I'm not sure where else you can get them. But yeah, I'll put the link. Oh my God, future Kevin, put the link, please. And guys, I often cut this out of my videos, but the videos are generally like footage wise really long because every plant I bring and show you, I'm always just like concentrating to see if there's any like pests. Like I said, when I had the infestation of spider mites, like this melochrysum had webs everywhere. Right there, do you see the mite damage? So, and thankfully, and I know I'm gonna jinx it now, thankfully, there's been nothing. I wanted to show you because, okay, it's nothing yet because she's not even out of the caterpill, but there is a new leaf developing. Oldest leaf, newest leaf. Oh my gosh, she almost pushed y'all. Okay, look, 
she's popping out. The moss pole does need to, you know, be sprayed a little bit. So I guess we'll do that now. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. The air raid mix, she is fine. She doesn't need to be watered. But the moss, even though it's not dry, it's getting there. <laughs> so I'm just gonna try to spray the top part. Okay, I'm just adding a new piece of press and seal because the other one kept falling off. So she is doing well. I'm so excited for this leaf. Okay, guys, <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but this is my new leaf on my queen anthurium right over here. I put her back where she was because like she kind of has protection from the other anthuriums in this like little space here. And so I told y'all the last video that I've been spraying her every day and sometimes twice a day. Okay, so I grab this deli container. <laughs> I basically put it right underneath, put the leaf inside and then I go like this. And I know it doesn't catch all the spray, but Ooh, oh my god. Okay, let's try this again, guys. Okay, guys, don't hate me. I've really ignored my Brantiatum. And like, she looks okay, but obviously she can look so much better. The moss pole, like, I just haven't filmed it, but I have been spraying it periodically. But there was a time where she totally dried out. There are some leaves with holes. I don't know if you can see this one, but future Kevin zoom in. Look at the Holiania. Again, I'm just taking the spray and I don't know why I didn't use the spray nozzle more. Yeah, I was watching a Wild Fern video recently and she was talking about, or she did a video about her plants on moss poles and she mentioned that it's a lot of maintenance and a lot of work to keep on top of like keeping them moist. And I would have to agree with it because I don't know, at least in my conditions when your humidity isn't like necessarily high, like everything dries out really quickly. In the case of the Brantiatum, a plant that needs higher humidity for the leaves to like unfurl and scave. It definitely is a lot more work, but kind of it does kind of pay off, guys. Okay, and I'm just adding a little bit more moss just because there are some stems that are past the moss level. Okay, I think that's good, guys. So I'm gonna grab an anthurium that I haven't shown you guys. It's the anthurium crystallinum dark form. I've always wanted a crystallinum, but I wanted one that was like different. I don't know. So I bought this small plant in like October. And here's the thing guys, I've said this so many times. I'm either not patient enough or I don't do it properly. Me transitioning a plant from a high humidity environment into my room conditions, the plants do so poorly. Anyhow, basically when I introduced her to lower humidity conditions, she like, <laughs> She really just, well, the newest leaf like shriveled up and I also transferred her into pawn. Anyhow, let me grab her. <laughs> okay, this is so funny. Here she is. Okay, I'm showing this for a reason. There's a new leaf. This is the first leaf. I didn't think this was gonna bounce back. So she had this leaf. So this is the oldest leaf. This was the newest leaf. So when she started shriveling up, I was like, okay, well, she has one leaf already. Like, isn't this exciting? So I just wanted to like show you guys the new leaf because like it's the first one. I do need to, do you know what? I can take this leaf off. I could just pull it off. Yeah. <laughs> I am so excited for her. Okay, and speaking of other anthurium, so here is my Crystallina Magnificum. You know, this one is doing great. The new leaf is here. She is here and she's ready to like open. I do want to show you oh, Anthurium Magnificum Luxuriant. Look at her guys. Okay, the new leaf is like stuck. Look at that bend. So I think this is going to be damaged. I sprayed this leaf down twice a day for a week and she still hasn't freed herself. So I'm gonna run water. Okay, I'm just gonna run, I'm just running the leaf over the faucet, guys. Okay, I'll let that sit for a little bit. I'm really scared about the third baby anthurium I have. Crystalline Magnificum Luxurians. The moment the new leaf was coming, I don't know what's happening because anyhow, the other leaves are dying, which is normal, but even the newest leaf like doesn't look normal. Do you know what I mean? And I mean, it could be normal. I think I'm gonna put it in one of these pots, guys. 
if I have one. Okay, I do have a couple, which is good. I don't know if it's because the pond is like too dry. I think I mentioned that I want to give each anthurium its own reservoir for itself. Because I found when they were sharing that like dog bowl that the reservoir would dry out really fast. So I'm just putting this together, grabbing the pond. Okay, let's take a look guys. I mean, the roots look fine. Ooh, look at the one in the middle. That one's good. Yeah, the roots are fine. So do you know what? It could be normal. We'll just put a layer down there. This leaf's going, so I'm just gonna pull it off. And then honestly, this looks so funny. Like, <laughs> these leaves are so small. I'm just holding it in place and putting some pawn. Oh my God, this is so cute. Okay, is this overkill? I don't think so. I know a lot of people are gonna think that. Anyhow, I'm just going to fill up the reservoir. Okay, and I'm gonna put her back. Okay, oh my God, finally. It's free. I was just so scared that this was gonna snap. Anyhow, I'm gonna leave her. God, this one is gonna be one of my favorites. She is so beautiful. Okay, big news. Big, big news. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> she, she hasn't changed that much. Hoya Mithild Splash. So the last time I showed her was in my Hoya video. So the vines have grown or the like the new growth and there are some that are like totally like splashy. Okay, the one that was coming out of these two leaves it's not splashy, which is so interesting. Um, even like the leaves there, you can't really tell. Maybe the one on this side. Look at this, guys. Look at that. Wow, that is stunning. I don't even know where you're coming from. Oh, okay. She's coming from this splashy leaf right there. So that makes sense. This half moon leaf, this tendril, look at this splash. And then look at the new leaves. Do you see? That right there, oh my God, how exciting. I just want to show you guys like that, this. I saw this and I'm like, this looks like a totally different plant. Are you kidding me? So I'm really excited for that vine to grow out. I think I'm just gonna trail it down or do y'all want me to trellis it up? I've trellised it once in my life. The other times I've just let it trail down and like it gets really full when you do that. Kind of want that look, but it's gonna be different when it comes to the splashing. Like if I don't see any splash, I might just end up cutting it aggressively i don't know let me know guys okay philodendron Mon <laughs> whoa monstera and ensodia so these are actually the variegated ones first set of leaves for both of them you could kind of see a little bit of variegation there i think they're big enough that i can separate them there are maybe a few more that aren't ready but we'll just look at the roots so i'm gonna put them in moss okay so i mean you can't really see the root there's two. The main one is this one. The pawn is like really latching onto it. I mean, that's long enough for me. So I'm gonna put her in this small cup of moss just like that. Okay, isn't she a cutie? That is one. Ooh, look at this. Look at this, there's three roots. There's a lot of branching. Wow, these are healthy. So again, some spag. These roots are really incredible, guys. They look really, really good. And I know she's probably gonna outgrow this one, but we'll see what happens. These ones are so cute. Okay, I'm gonna put them back under grow light. Okay, I think there's only three more in here. I'm gonna keep them this way. Probably when this one opens and hardens off, I'll repot this one. This one already kind of pushed out a leaf. I don't know why she melted that way. I think it was the white part. Anyhow, I'm gonna wait for another leaf and then I'll probably repot this one. And then there's a stick here. <laughs> that hasn't pushed out anything. We're, gonna just, we're just gonna put her back. Okay, I want to do like a full Phalaenopsis update. Honestly, I am so happy with how they're doing. Rundown, do I have eight? I think I have eight. Miss Miki, fortune cat, has been in bloom. She pushed out this bloom. Then she pushed out this bloom. There's like a sub spike that has grown a little bit more here. And then at the tip, it looks like she's kind of stopped. So I think she'll probably push out buds from this one. So that is number one, she's in Lekka. How gorgeous is this orchid? I'm really excited because like, I say this every time, but if y'all remember in my New Year's resolution video, I said, I want every single one of my Phalaenopsis to bloom, 100% bloom rate at one point in 2023. Okay, Phalaenopsis, mini mark, 
has opened a few more flowers. So it's funny because when they open, they're a bit more like yellow tinted, but then they fade to like a white. This is the latest one to open. Um, and then there's two more on the other side. Isn't this adorable? There's more buds, so she's she's gonna bloom. More, hopefully. And I mean, all my Phalaenopsis are now in Lekka. That is number two. Number three, Phalaenopsis Mickey Diamond Panda. So she opened this bloom, and then this is the new one. So she now has two. You can see all the buds over there, but man, it's hard to explain, but these petals and the foliage, they're so sturdy feeling. It is just... Unbelievable guys, I am so impressed. So three of them have bloomed, which is just so amazing. Number four, Phalaenopsis Lewisberry Trinity. So, <laughs> there's two spikes guys. This is incredible. Okay, so here she is. Future Kevin put a picture of what the blooms look like. So, do I have a picture? Anyhow, the blooms are so cute and pretty. So, look at that guys, this spike, look at that. So there she is, that's number one. And then there's a small one on the other side, right there. So two spikes and look at those new roots. Outstanding. This one is gonna bloom, you know, if I don't kill it before then. But number four has two spikes. This one, I am so, okay. So there's two orchids that I don't know what they are because the labels fell out of the pot. The leaves were generally the same size. This is what I think is a Phalaenopsis Miki Japanese Pearl. Future Kevin, add these pictures. So pretty, they're actually pretty big. I think I showed this spike. So the spike has grown a lot. And then look on the other side, guys. Seriously, there is another one. What on earth? earth what on earth <laughs> so that's just wonderful so i'm pretty sure it's that one it could also be this one but i'm not sure the second one it could be is one with like huge white blooms and if you just haven't put the name here I, I keep forgetting the name this one and i didn't see i don't think i saw this until now this phalaenopsis is pushing out a spike as well are you joking? I have no words. They're all pushing out spikes. So definitely one of these is the Japanese pearl. One is the, the white one with the super big flowers, but two spikes and one spike. Okay. This one also lost the label, but just from process of elimination. This one is the green world, GW green world snake skin. So this is also new right there. Future Kevin zoom in. That is a spike. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. This was, I think this was my first orchid. And the last one, so the last one, for me, it's shocking to say that this is the only one that isn't pushing out a spike, but this is the Phalaenopsis Sogo Diamond HLW. I think this was the last Phalaenopsis that bloomed for me. And the blooms, even like the petals are like such a weird shape, I think. The pattern is stunning. I always think about like a pink panther, just like looking at it. She's not pushing out a spike, but you can see there, that is a new leaf, which is amazing. I didn't expect this one to bloom so soon after, because like I said, this was the last one that was in bloom. I think it was July. Three out of the eight of them have bloomed already already. Seven out of eight of them have either bloomed or pushed out new spikes and there's only one that hasn't pushed out a spike. <laughs> what? Am I the Phalaenopsis Whisperer? That is insane. I am so happy. I am so happy that I made the decision to transfer all these fowls into Lekka. I was so scared. Like everyone was telling me not to. And like, this is clearly another example where you just need to trust your instincts, trust what you know about fowls and like apply it to like Lekka and they'll thrive. They'll do so well. How exciting. <laughs> okay guys, <laughs> Monstera Burlywark's flame. Okay, I'm not gonna do much with her. Oh my gosh, guys, I can't get over this. Are you kidding? These leaves are so beautiful. What? Okay, so I remember I wrapped this with moss and tried to like guide the root into the moss pole. I don't know if you can see, but she's starting to like go off of it. And like, I just need to remove this, see what's happening. I can feel like there is a new root that's gonna grow. So yeah, I just wanna see like what I did here. I'm confused. Okay, here we are. Oh, I'm like so scared because you know when you can feel that there's a new leaf coming? It's like not there yet, but it's definitely coming. Okay, what did I do? <laughs> so I wrapped, there's a root here. Can you see, future Kevin zoom in, there's a root right here. It didn't even grow, even though I wrapped it with moss. And that might be because I didn't keep it wet enough, but that is hilarious. Uh, I mean, there's still a chance that it'll root. I just gotta keep it like super wet. Cause here's the thing, because I feel a new leaf, I'm like scared to like press it against the moss pole because sometimes you might damage it and then it affects the leaf. 
underneath. Okay, I'm just kind of seeing, because if I put moss in front of that aerial root that wasn't rooted and wrap it, there's now space here, which I'm kind of okay with just because I can feel that there is a new leaf developing. And so, yeah, I think I like this better because now this part won't be rubbing against the moss pole. Because it happened with my Aurea, the new leaf hasn't come out yet, so I really don't know if it's like damaged. So I'm just gonna have to wait to see, but I'm just kind of scared. <laughs> And also guys, there's a few more people. I feel like I've pressured everyone, but there's a few more people that have messaged me. And Francis, if you're watching, hi, I'm so excited for your baby, Burly Mark's Flame. But yeah, a lot of people have been messaging me. So I'm sorry that I'm a bad influence. I'm trying to keep it aligned without touching the new leaf part. Hopefully the new root will latch into this moss and then into the moss pole. And I'm just going to add some reinforcement because sometimes press and seal fails. So I'm so curious again, because you know, my anthurium regal, my desipins, my metallicums, they're all covering the south facing window. Like I said before, this plant isn't under a grow light. Only this leaf is like, kind of getting medium light, but then the other ones are covered by the anthurium leaves. So I'm actually curious to see if it's gonna be like a smaller leaf or it's gonna be one that's like this one. I know monsters can tolerate lower light compared to other plants, but I'm just curious, fenestration wise. What's the situation gonna be? Okay guys, I'm just gonna add a little bit more moss into the moss pole and I'm just gonna water over. I haven't done a good job keeping this moss pole wet just because there's no aerial roots that have latched onto it. Um, and that might be another reason why that root didn't do anything. And I was thinking maybe I should move this plant just so I can reach it. Cause honestly, I can't reach this plant. <laughs> okay. Roots are good guys. I just love seeing these roots. Like, look at these. These are amazing. Okay guys, we're back in the plant room. I am so in love. I'm so in love with this anthurium. Oh, she's so big. Seriously? So I showed this, I think, yeah, it was my favorites video. It wasn't hardened off yet, but now, uh, are you kidding me? Did I say what this was? Anthuria magnificum crossed with regal. So stunning. And honestly, when she hardens off, she's not as fragile as for example, a regal. She's so pretty. She is so pretty. Can you see like the red tones, undertone? Not really, eh? Wow, I, just, I don't know. The veining is so unique to me. Do y'all think that? Like this anthurium veining, it's like a lot. Anyways, remember that offshoot. I think you can see it better with this one. So the little pup, the one that was like long. So here's the pup guys. Look at that red. I don't know why I'm so fascinated about it. Anyways, I'm curious to see if the rest of the leaves are gonna be long like this because the mama, she is not. She is just rounded, doing her thing. And yeah, oh my gosh, look how beautiful. Look how beautiful. I can't get over the leaf. She has pushed out an inflow. So guys, I'm such a noob when it comes to pollinating. So there was a gigantic inflow from my Crystallina Magnificum. Uh, I took pollen from that one. She is pushing out another inflow as well, but she's not open. I grabbed pollen from that and I rubbed it yesterday. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm still not sure. Like when it comes to hybrid, pollinate with hybrid, like how does that work? You know, it might not even be successful anyway. There were two inflows on my Crystallina Magnificum. I took pollen from that one, pollinated the other one, but it didn't work. That was back in December, the inflow dried out which is fine, like it's all trial and error. I still need to do a ton of research when it comes to that. Anyhow, I am rambling again. Those two plants need to be watered, so I'm just gonna water them. So that's her, and then... Okay. Okay guys, I'm gonna do something dangerous. I really wanna look at the regal leaf because I think she's like kind of hardened off. I do need to water her also. And so, okay, I'm like hugging her. Ooh, ee, ooh. Okay, that's the old leaf. Oh, guys, okay, wait. I know there's some damage now, but this is crazy to me. Oh, there is more damn. Where do you come from? Probably rubbed on something, but that's like minimal compared to like what I'm used to. Oh my God. <laughs> 
Oh my god. I can't get over this regal. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't know guys, this is crazy. Ooh, so pretty. Wow, 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 okay. I'm like trying to figure out how to put you back safely. Hey. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, lifting the pot, it is so light. I'm just watering her. Okay, and this one, I try not to go to the maximum just because I know like the regal is like kind of sensitive sometimes. Also, while we're here, my top cutting of my Monster Aurea, the new leaf has come out a little bit more and obviously you can't really tell if it's variegated or not, but I just noticed this. I didn't realize, do you see that root? She went into the moss pool and now she's like going down into the leka. That is amazing. Okay, oh my god, I forgot I didn't do a weather update. It's been like cloudy today. Clouds, clouds, clouds. There is, because the sun is setting, you can see that over there. It's crazy because when I first moved here, this was the only condo that was present. Now there's this one, that one that one and that one and there was there's another one behind there that wasn't there before i'm trying to decide if i want to propagate my epipremnum marble the leaves they're not like unfurling themselves i don't know if it's because it's in an air raid mix they like don't open <laughs> okay here's a tough part there is a new oop. oh my god so there is a new leaf here the one before that is not even open like this part won't open it seems to me that like when she had more green she would open and she would just be fine. But do you know what? I think I'm gonna just make sure I have some roots in the moss and then I'll propagate her. Also, this leaf does look bigger than the other ones. So maybe I'll see what happens there. Anyhow. I'm just kind of doing a slow flow from the top just because she was on the drier side. Does anyone else have this plant? Because I'm curious to like hear any other of y'all's experiences. Cause like, I mean, she's still growing, but the leaves just don't open already. She's a funny plant guys, super funny. Okay guys, I got to water a lot of my strawberry shakes and moss. And actually I think I'm gonna separate this one. So pretty. This is one of my older ones. So the really variegated one are these, is it four leaves? Yeah, these four leaves. Can you believe that guy? The other one is fine. It has some variegation, like there's a half moon there, but I feel like I wanna separate them. I think I'm gonna keep one in the same cup, probably the variegated one, like the more variegated one. And then I'm gonna put the other one in this small cup here. So these started out as like nodes and I'm so happy I did it. Can one of you let go of the other one, please? Okay, so this one. Oh my god, I kind of want to keep this one, but I can't. It looks like she first rooted from this node with this root system, and then now she's rooting from different points. Okay, so I'm putting just one into the cup, and I'm going to try my best to submerge the newer roots as well. I'm actually obsessed with this one. I mean, come on. Ooh, okay. I might have to keep this one. No, I can't. Here's one. The second one, she did have a root from the wet stick situation, but it looks like that it's newer. It looks like she might've pushed out new growth first. And then that's the main root system here. I don't know if y'all can see. So same thing, some moss. And the second one is over here. Okay, and then the strawberry shake. So I do want to show you some. I don't need to do anything with this one, but I'm really excited because she is pushing out a new leaf there. So roots. Look at these guys. Oh, so super excited for this one. And I am curious to see what the variegation is like because this one, it's just kind of speckled variegation and predominantly green. This one, I'll put a little bit, but she did have this main root before, but you can see that she's starting to branch out. So how wonderful. Oh my God, I picked it up and I was like, this is extremely light. This one has a new leaf. Do you see that guys? New leaf and that's the mother leaf and she definitely needs to be watered. Oh my God, the sun is setting. Uh, I don't know, it feels nice. Okay, I grabbed some more. Okay, let's start off with this green one. This green one, even though she doesn't have a lot of variegation, the node where the new growth will come out of, it's on the opposite side of the stem where this leaf is coming out. And so I just want to show you these roots look amazing. She hasn't pushed out that new growth yet, but I do need to water her. I'm excited for this one. 
because she is pushing out a new growth right there from within the petiole which means it's coming out part of the stem. <laughs> the light is so bright. If a new growth is coming from a node from the stem that's on the same side as a variegated leaf, then odds are this leaf or new growth or whatever is gonna be variegated. So do you need to water her? Did I show you the roots? They look great. Look at those. I almost got rid of this one because this leaf is green and the node is on the same side as the green side. So I just thought I'd wait to see what grows. Uh, you can see the roots are amazing. Okay, and then this one, these were the wonky cuttings and I debated if I want to keep them as well. Um, anyhow, I just threw them in this cup of moss together. There's probably like two or three in here. You can see some rootage all along the moss here, so. I don't know, <laughs> my mic was off. Oh my gosh, okay. I don't know how much y'all heard, but this is a Thai constellation. I propagated in pawn. I just don't like the setup, but there is, oh, it's so bright. There's a new growth there. So yay, I think I'm gonna put it into moss because I'm starting to like moss. Like who am I? I it's so weird repeating the same thing again. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I love how it's like, I don't know if she's rooted, but she must be. Um, Thai constellations, man. How do I get these? Because these holes are small. I'm actually so surprised. How did you? I'm going to have to break them, guys. Some people are going to be like, why do you need to? Why did you do this? Okay. <laughs> she's just going to keep growing. The roots are just going to take over the reservoir. And like, usually I have no issues with that. But this is a small pot. Like it's going to become an issue because Thai constellation roots are so big. I'm just gonna have to break the roots, guys. Alrighty, I'm gonna try my best to get all the pawn into the soup container. Oh, it's so sunny I can't even see what y'all are seeing right now, so I apologize. Okay, I only lost a few. I lost these two big ones. Again, I can't see what y'all are seeing. You see this, guys? I'm just gonna like move it around. Oh my god, look at these roots. Okay, it's not that much bigger, but I'm gonna switch it over. I, I wow, I'm so shocked by that, guys. I don't know why. Okay, so that new growth will be the new growth. <laughs> so here she is. Okay, she's not stable. Okay, where's the tape? <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. This propagation, she's at the very back of my shelf. And so I don't look at her ever. I just kind of reach over with my pump and I just looked at the meter to see if it was like full or not. And most times it would be like close to empty. Okay, I secured it with two pieces of tape, y'all. So that's why I'm shocked. Like I wanted to show you guys because I was worried that there's something going on with the roots, but apparently not. Okay, she's right under two grow lights actually that's probably why the root system was so big <laughs> it's crazy guys i don't even i don't even know oh my god i can't get a good angle whatever okay guys i guess that's it thank you guys so much for watching i'm planning to film my q a in the next few days so that will be coming out sometime this week probably and in that video i'm going to be repotting mainly my philodendron strawberry shakes the ones that are in pond just because you know again thinking about shipping and how heavy pond is i think i'm going to switch them all to moss we'll take a look at the roots i ignored them a little bit so like we'll see thank you guys so much for watching if you've made it to the very end thank you guys so much i greatly appreciate it and i'll see you guys later bye <laughs>